Hi everyone, my name is Steve Lawson. My name is Anya Pofana. So we are here in our bay at Waukesha, Wisconsin on the Cigna Architect, scanning on our MR30 software. So this particular software, as you may have seen on the previous video, expands out some of the features of Air Recon DL and allows us to use that in um, 3D and propeller imaging. But we've also expanded it out into some other applications as well. So we'd like to share some of that information with you. First of all, um, we have a subject on the table. Uh, we are going to scan his brain and um, we already ran the localizer and we want to show that we also can apply air recon DL to our um, MP Rage sequence. As you can see here, MP Rage is already open and we have the same uh, software uh, where we apply air recon DL in the same way as usual. So we go to the details page. Here you find recon DL strengths. You have all three um, strengths available. We are going to apply high, which means we are uh, reconstructing with 75% less noise. And uh, what we are going here, just some random parameters um, to show is we are going to scan a pixel size less than a millimeter. So it will be 0 0.8, 0 0.8 by 0 0.8, so isotropic in all three planes. And the scan time for that MP rage will be only 3 minutes and 16 seconds because we are, with Eric on the arm, not worried about the noise. So we are able to accelerate with uh, our hypersense technique uh, on top of that, which I would never have done without mm -hmm. Eric on the arm. So I, I think it's uh, nice to have a 3 minute 16 scan less than a millimeter scan time, and we are going to cover the entire brain. <laughs> yeah, typically, if you were to do this without air recon DL, you're not going to be accelerating as, as much. You're not going to be doing resolution this high, <laughs> for sure. So, and scan times would be, you know, easily four and a half, five minutes with this particular acquisition. So, um, a huge uh, benefit here <laughs> to using this in regard to workflow and productivity, but then also getting better images <coughs> while you do that. Another huge example where I'm happy to have Eric on DL is for our uh, cube DIR sequence, right? Because that sequence, just by nature, has like no signal because we are suppressing fat, we are suppressing white matter. On top of that, we are suppressing the fluid, so it's hard to get signal out of the patient. So I would never get a pixel size um, like around a millimeter before Eric on DL. Mm, so uh, with Eric on DL, I'm, I'm going to scan here, I suppress. The, um, the tissue, and I will um, do the scan time three minutes and 49 seconds. Yeah, this is a huge one. I think, um, you know, without air recon DL, you're typically scanning 1.3 or 1.4 isotropic. So that's probably 50% improvement yeah. resolution alone, um, or more possibly. And then also, uh, the scan times were much longer, so four and a half minutes yes. plus in addition to the low resolution. So, um, yeah, this is, this is a really um, nice uh, demonstration, I think, of Air Recon DL and how the SNR improves and overall quality. And the sequence is so beneficial for, like, in brain diagnostic in general, because as we mentioned, everything is suppressed. So if there is something going on, it's so easy to detect. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is a very valuable pulse sequence, I think, for patients that have uh, demyelination um, type diseases. So multiple sclerosis um, or, or something along those lines, this is, this is going to be a, um, a really nice scan to be able to demonstrate those um, white matter hyperintensities there. Okay. So here's an example where we apply Ericon DL uh, to our DTI sequence. So you see I've applied Ericon DL in the typical way, details page, drop down, we set it to high. Then just look at the parameter of the DTI itself. We are going to have 30 directions applied here. We will have a 1000 B value. And then uh, on top of that, we will accelerate that sequence with hypervent. And uh, we cover the entire brain, three millimeter slices, and we will have a scan time, one minute, 42 seconds. So in this particular example, this is just a single um, B value or a single shell um, of a 1000 scan, 1000 B value. Um, it is possible that you could run this as a multi-shell acquisition as well, applying Air Recon DL to that. In that example, you know, you can define the, um, uh, the number of directions at each B value that you would run, and then you know, have the benefit also of being able to apply Air Recon DL. Some of the um, higher B values, like say if you did 3000 B value, as in some of the research studies for human connectome or ABCD, for example, 
Um, those are going to have less signal inherently, but once again, great that you have air recon DL to not be so concerned about that. It is even possible that you could increase the B value from what you're uh, doing today. Maybe it's 3,000. You could do something like 4,000 um, on, on that multi-shell DTI. And then, you know, obviously those have less signal, but, um, you know, air recon DL yeah. is, a, is a huge win there for that. And maybe then also like to, to add another 2D sequence where I'm really happy that I finally have Eric on the L available is our um, flex sequence. Flex, as a reminder, is a Dixon technique where every single time when I want to have fat suppressed images and my spectral fat saturation is maybe n not so well. So here's an example of um, uh, orbit scan. I am now able to do a flex technique also with Eric on DL. So details page again, uh, drop down menu, menu, menu Eric on DL strength set to high. And then we are going to use, um, we will generate the in, uh, in phase images and the post phase images and we'll do have afterwards a water selective and a fat selective image. And um, here also some, some like parameters about uh, slice thickness. So we will go through the orbit, two millimeter slice thickness. We will have a thin pixel size, 1.5 by 1.6, and scan time is two minutes 33. Flex techniques were also always kind of slightly longer sequences, and they were always having the benefit of nice fat suppression, but due to scan times, there was always like a not so frequent use sequence, I would say, but I'm happy that I'm now um, having Eric and DL on those flex sequences as well. You most likely would not be acquiring it also with two millimeter slices without <laughs> DL. This is a very high resolution scan, so it's fantastic. Okay, and then the next uh, uh, um, benefit of MR30 is the SWAN sequence, which is uh, in the MR30 release um, available with Hypersense. So here we can accelerate that technique, that sequence with hypersense. You see, I've applied that acceleration. Hypersense is selected to 1.1. And that is why we can have, again, like really better implant resolution and slice thicknesses than prior to our swan sequences, which also always would have a long scan time. So we will have a 0.7 by 0.7. Slice thickness is 1.7. We cover the entire brain and the scan time is um, 4 minutes and 51 seconds. So one other enhancement to MR30 software is an enhancement to 3D ASL scans. So uh, with this one, this is interesting. You have the ability to adjust the uh, delay time here. So if you click on this advanced tab and you look at the uh, flexible labeling mode, you can now adjust this for the labeling duration. Uh, there are certain populations, the geriatric and ischemic diseases, um, that you would need to lengthen this um, label duration time out. So this gives you the ability to be able to adjust this and get more accurate perfusion maps with your uh, CBF. This is based from an uh, ISMRM perfusion study group where they had uh, looked at this and decided that, you know, uh, this would provided more accurate uh, results in those spe specific uh, populations of uh, patients. And just um, to, to give uh, one more details on like how to work with it. So you go to the advanced page, there's a user CV, which um, first you have to set to one that allows you when that is set to one user CV4 to change the uh, laboring du duration and you can just type in the milliseconds you need. So let's review the images of the uh, Bravo sequence. We just pulled that up here. Uh, just as a reminder, the pixel size was, um, the voxel size was isotrope, like 1.8. Uh, and these are the results. Scan time, 3 minutes and 18 with every DL. Yeah, this is the one we're over accelerating on to, um, to go fast. You know, 0.8 resolution without uh, high acceleration, you're, you're looking at, you know, 5 minutes probably for this acquisition. Um, so we're, we're able to do that, not concerned about noise anymore. Uh, Air Recon DL really takes care of that for us. We do have a comparison data set here that we could show um, without DL. So this is exactly what we're talking about, um, what you would get today if you tried to do this with the same type of uh, 
um, accelerations, resolution. The images are noisy, obviously, on the left. They're, that's not really acceptable. So great comparison, I think, for that. Yeah. And then the second sequence we scanned was the cube DIR. So here, again, the image quality with Aericon DL. As a reminder here, pixel size was, um, voxel size was isotropic one millimeter in each direction. And then again, the comparison to the same data set before reconstructing with Aericon DL, that is, I don't have to say, but <laughs> pointed out, but on the left-hand side. So really like yeah. nicely demoed, if you suppress like three different tissues, then you cannot accelerate that high or you cannot choose such a small voxel size. Yeah, I would always go to 1.4, 1.3 maybe to maintain reasonable scan times. But here we can go um, to one millimeter isotropic. And then uh, we can also like maybe look at the reformats here, right? Yeah, as we were talking about, the reconstructions are much better um, with their recondial, the sharpness and the uh, quality of the reconstructions are dramatically improved um, with our with um, air recon DL. All right, and the very um, next scan that we acquired after that was a, a diffusion tensor scan. I think it was 30 directions. We used hyperband to accelerate. I think it was around one minute thirty seconds. One one minute thirty seconds, using air recon DL on the DTI, and this is a uh, tractography of that and we fused it to the cube DIR, but I think you can see the results here on the tracks. It looks um, really nice example here of that. So like I said, you can use this on multi-shell DTI acquisitions or single shell, uh, but it, it, is a, uh, it is a really nice add, I think, to Air Recon DL to be able to have this functionality um, and uh, bringing that to a diffusion tensor. So really great results. Here we do have the example which we acquired through the orbits, the flex, so our Dixon technique. And uh, scan time, as a reminder, was 2 minutes 33 for 2 millimeter slice thickness and a 0.5 by 0.6 millimeter in plane resolution. These ones are the ones acquired with Eric Condia. Also, here the comparison to the non DL images on the left hand side. So again, a great example, like how much noise can be removed when using Aricon DL. So here you would have to achieve way more um, signals. So you have to extend the scan time at least by a minute or two to have something similar to on the right hand side. So this really rounds out what we think a lot of our customers would be doing in 99% of clinical routine scanning. So. Not only your regular 2D acquisitions that you've been able to do with Air Recon DL, we've now brought 3D and Propeller, as well as FSC Flex and DTI. So uh, it, it really will help, I think, improve the overall image quality that you're seeing coming from your GEMR scanner. Once again, it's available across the entire portfolio. And we're really excited to share this with you. We do have more videos coming soon in regards to MR30, but that's all for now. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.